And I would also love that. Yeah. I, would, I myself think that would play a good start. But he said, were two or more together in my name, I'll be in the midst, right? So, hey, we've got four, so, right? So he's here in the midst. Here's what I'm going to speak on. Growing in Christ. I've often heard it said after I'm saved and I'm done. I'm going home to be, be with, with the Lord. But here's what I'm going to speak on. After we are saved, as I've heard him say so often and so, so frequent, after we have gotten saved, hey, the Lord has some things for us he's wanting to do. He expects some things of us. It says in 2 Timothy 1 and 9, who has saved us and, and called us with a holy calling and, and not according to, to our own works, but according but ac According to his purpose, he has some things for us after we were saved. But here's where I am. Hey, I'm headed. He has a small kid. I grew up hey, in the ch ch church. In fact, we were always at church. He has a small kid. I mean, all day Sunday we were in church. Church and I always said, you know, Mama, well, hey, do we have to stay all the, the, the day? And her response is, you better shut up. And I would like say no more on, on that. But as a kid, <laughs> hey, we spent all day in church. Well, here's why it's so good and it's so important that hey, that hey, we grow in Christ because I've got news. After you have gotten saved. What does Satan do after we've gotten saved? He, he doesn't quit right and say, okay, he's saved, so I'm going to head over here and fool with Satan. Yes, no. No, he says, he's saved, okay, here I come. Here I come. I mean, I want him back, so here I come. So, right? He walks around like a roaring lion, seeing whom he can. devour but here's what I'm happy and here's what I want to share with us after we have been saved in Christ there is no what 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 weapon that is formed against us shall prosper why because we have Christ right he's going to what for us he's going to fight our battles for us if we, if we will abide in Christ, if we will stay in Christ, if we are led, are led by Christ, if we walk by faith, if we stay in Christ. And here's, here's also where I am going. As a small kid, we were always in church and I remember as a, as a, as a young man, I had a job. I held the doors for years. I mean, I'd sit back there and I was trained to hold those doors. And here's what I was trained to do. Hey, hey, when hey, they're praying, I was to not let anybody in the church while the praying was up. Hey, was happening. And, and, and I saw times I'd grab and, and I'd hold those doors and they'd Hey, there'd be folks on those doors, and everybody'd be, you know, and I'd be holding. I can't, just, I can't let them in. But here's what's heavily on my heart. I think back then and now. It took years for me to hey to get from back there to up here. But here's how it happened: growing and hey, maturing in Christ, staying in Christ by by a body in Christ. And here's why it's so important that 
and that we stay in Christ and we abide in Christ. And here's one more thing I'd like to share, that we are God's handiwork. We are cr created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God had pr pr prepared a beforehand for us to do. Now, let me say this. As a kid, I knew from an early age that I was supposed to preach, and I know you guys wouldn't say it, but I wasn't concerned with it because I couldn't, so I didn't have to, right? So I said, I know I should, and I sat back there at, at those doors there, and I still recall, I said, you know, one day I'm going to preach, but the, 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 I had this idea of no, no, you, you can't, and that went on for years and years. But here's what happened. As I stayed in church and as time went by, time went by, it wasn't very long to where I knew once I stepped out on Christ, the Lord was going to fix things so I could. But then it became what? Me stepping out on Christ. And that was a slow process before I began to really step out in faith, and what is faith? It's those things that are unseen. It's those things that aren't going to make sense. It's those things that we can't do on our own, but if we will abide in Christ and stay in Christ, he's going to fix it so it's going to happen. We are to walk by faith and we are to not walk by sight. Here's what happens to us often and frequently. We want to do it on, on our own will. If, we, if it doesn't make sense to us, we think that we can't do it, right? And after a while, it will stop, right? I can't do it. It doesn't make sense. Or I'm gonna, because I remember for years, and here's, here, here was one thing that, hey, that haunted me. Here, here's also how I knew that I would one day preach. As I went from church, I was always told when you get ready to preach, what, what we're waiting to hear you preach. And I thought, why are they saying this? Why are they saying this? How, how do they know that? And that went on and on. But I was still growing. I was still growing. But the Lord knew what he had in mind. But here's what happens. It's a process. It takes time sometimes. Now, I'm not saying everybody is going to. To preach, but here's what I am saying, and it's like what the pastor has so often and frequently said. Hey, those who the Lord have saved, and those who He has called, He has some things for us. He has some things for us. Now, let me stop for a second. I heard him speak this morning, and at the end of what he said, I felt the same way. All the Lord has did for me, I I can hear folks saying, well, I'm saved, so why in the world would I go and do something? As he said something here this morning, he touched my heart. I enjoy speaking for Christ. I enjoy preaching for Christ. Why? Because I love the Lord with all my heart, and I feel the same way he feels. All that the Lord has fixed for me, all the Lord has for me in, in my life, I'm happy. I have a chance to do something for him. Here's what I want to happen. As I heard him speak this morning, as he spoke, I said this. When I stand before Christ, I want to hear Christ say, Daryl, you tried. You're a wreck still. Then you were a wreck, but you're still a wreck, but you tried. You made, hey, you tried to serve me. I saw you grow. I saw you, I saw you make a honest attempt at s s serving me. Now let me stop for a second. Why do I want Christ to say that? I want him to say something like that about me. Why? Because I love Christ. I want him to know that I made an honest attempt. And that's just in my heart. It's just in my soul. And let me, let me say this. There isn't anything big I can do. There isn't anything big that anybody can do. But one thing, and that's serve Christ. 
because that's what he's looking for. He wants us. He's got some things for us to do. Now, here's where I'm going next. The Lord has a purpose for our life. He has, he has a purpose for us. As a child, he knew what he had planned for my life. He had, there's, hey, for me, it was to preach. Hey, for you, it may not be say that, but he has something for your life. He has something for us all. And always accept this and always this, and it doesn't matter what anybody says. Often as a child and in school I was often told, find something you can do with your hands. Because you stutter. Do something with your hands because you're not a speaker. Do something with your hands, because that's you're really good with your hands. But let me say this. If God be for us, it doesn't matter who is against us. And always be aware of this and always know this. If we stay in Christ, if we abide in Christ when he gets ready, on his time frame, when he gets ready, he will fix it so I remember I sat back there for years. I knew I was supposed to, and I knew he would fix it. I had to step out, but it's weird. Now, I, how things are now, it's unreal. If you will just step out on Christ, if you will put your faith in him and grow in Christ, he, he will fix things that it seemed like. Going to happen. Yes, I knew that I was supposed to preach. But those doors felt good as a kid. I could hold those doors. I was in control. I could use my little, and I was a fat boy for years, and I could use hey, my weight and I could grab them doors, and I could hang on to those doors, and, 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 and I held them well. I mean, I did that good. I, I was in control, but here's what happened as I grew and as time went by. As I grew and grew and grew it, as as in time went by, I understood I had to lean on Christ. I had to walk by faith. I had to step out and try things that I couldn't do, things that I wasn't in control of, things that only he could fix. But if he be forced, it does not matter what who says or who is against us. He will fix it on his own time frame. And let me say this, as we grow in Christ, it's important that we read scripture, that we read the Bible, and it's also important in my life that we surround ourselves with good God fearing folks. Wise counsel has made a huge impact in, in my life. You want to surround yourself with good God fearing folks. Because that will help you when times get hard, and there are going to be times it's going to get hard. It's going to be times it's going to seem like we're not going to get through it. Through it. But our faith is in the Lord. But if we surround ourselves with good God-fearing folks, it's going to make all the difference and the world. Here's where I'm going next. Change. The world is an ever-changing place. Get used to it. I was someone for years who didn't like change. I didn't want things to change. I wanted to know what was going to happen. You know, I wanted my life to be the same. I wanted to know what to expect. Change is a good thing. Why do I say change happens to be a good thing? I sat back there for years and I thought I couldn't do things. I'm so happy now I don't feel the way I felt then. I knew that I was supposed to preach, but I didn't know how I could. And I'm happy that I don't feel that way because all that had to happen was I had to step out on Christ. Change can be a good thing. And I'm so happy that change is an ever-going thing. It's an ongoing thing. As I age, I'm so happy I'm not going to always be here in Hey, this body and hurt how I hurt. Change is is a good thing. And understand this: if it doesn't matter if we accept it or not, it's going to happen. 
It's going to happen. It says, in the, for we will all be changed in a twinkling have an eye. So ch change happens. It happens to us all. It occurs. It's just a part of life, and our life is a process. We are to abide in Christ, grow in Christ. Why should we grow in Christ? As we grow in Christ, what's going to happen is we are going to lean more on Christ. We are going to, to become more obedient to Christ and it's going to show us how how to share love how he had planned for us to now I'm going to stop just for a second on that Christ walked down here he was our, our example if we they can learn how to love as he did it would make the world a lot better place. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to stop for just one second and say this. That was something that happened to me this week for a statement I got. And I said, things are, aren't really going to change. And, I, and I'm going to back up for a second. Here's why it's so important that we surround ourselves with wise counsel. Now, it wasn't anything huge it, it was some say some small things I had a friend said if we trust in the Lord and if we let him have have his way then things they'll happen how he wants them to happen and they always will and I thought about that and I thought about that and I thought about that and I was being hard headed but I knew what she was saying was right. But here's what happened to me for just a three minutes. I caught myself. I didn't like what he was saying. Now, here's why. It, it was fine who was saying what they were saying. And it was right. But here's what happens to us sometimes. Well, what makes her think she has, has a right to say what she's saying? If she's right, she's right, right? It doesn't matter who's saying it. If she's right, she's right. Now, what I'm going to do this week, I'm going to get on the phone with her and say, what you said was right, and I owe you an apology. You're absolutely right. The Lord has a plan for our lives. It's going to always work how he sees fit. How he sees fit, that's what's best. We were called how were we called? Uh, according to his purpose and not our own purpose. Here's what often happens. Hey, to the, hey, to the, hey, at certain times, what we think here is how it should happen. But here's what's best. It's not what, what we have in mind. As he said this morning, we're here to serve God to praise and worship God. In this life, we're also here to serve and worship Christ and get these things done that he has for our life. How do we do them? Out of love for Christ. We are here. After we are saved, here's how I want to get that. We are from that point forward a sign for Christ to help point folks to heaven. Here's Here's what the <coughs> Lord has for you. If you will abide in Christ, here's what's going to happen in your life. I heard him saying some things hey, this morning as he spoke, and I feel the, the same way. He knows there's only, only one, one God. Here's how he has a word of it behind the things that have happened in his life. Now, Here's what also, I know some folks who have known him for years. And through how he handled himself, it changed their life. Now that's some powerful stuff there. 
Now I'm going to stop for a second and say that. Again, how he lived his life. There were some folks saw these things as they happened in his life, how he handled those things. It changed some other folks' lives. That's what Christ is going to happen, right? As we live for Christ, we are signed for Christ. After we have been saved, he will use you to help lead folks to Christ. Now, I don't have a whole lot more, but I'm going to back up for just a second. And I, I want to hit this hard. Always find ways to grow in Christ. Why is that so important? In this life, there are going to be things that are going to happen. As we grow in Christ, as we read Scripture, as we surround ourselves with good folks, as we walk more on faith, as we lean more on the Lord, it's going to show us how to share love with folks as the Lord would have us do. And why is that so important? If you want to help impact somebody's life, if you want to help change somebody's life, just simply be there for them. Now, what do I mean by be there for them? Just be there for them. Here's what I mean. All you have to do is grow in Christ and be who Christ would want you to be. If you can just do that, it's going to impact the lives of other folks. How and why? It isn't going to be you. It's the Lord they're going to see in you, through you. That's how we impact other folks' lives. They allow him to work in our lives. Allow folks to see what, what the Lord has for them. I'm going to close with I'm going to close with this. I wish there was a way I I could could explain how I felt as a kid. I knew that I should preach. I knew that I was supposed to. But there isn't anything harder than I was aware of the fact of what I should do, but I knew I couldn't do it. Now, if you know you can't do something, I've got news for you. You can't, right? If you know you can't do it, you can't do it. But this is what I want you to share with folks. You know who's you know somebody who can. I knew somebody who could fix it for me. The same way he fixed it for me, he can fix it for you. Understand these things that you think you can't do. You're absolutely right. You can't do them. Text quote, quote me what I'm saying because I know how you are. If you think you can't do it, you can't on your own. But here's how you do it. You abide in Christ. <laughs> You live in Christ, and you walk in Christ, which you put him first, and when he gets ready to fix it, he's going to fix it. And that's why I can stand up here now and speak and preach, because the Lord fixed it. There wasn't anything I did to fix it. That fear would still be there. The word would still hang. There's times the word still hang. But he fixed it so I could speak and preach. But I didn't fix it. I, I, I'm not able to understand this. In this life, there are going to be a whole lot of things that we're not going to be able to fix. Hey, we just can't. Why? Because we're human. But if we learn hey, to grow in Christ, exist in Christ, abide in Christ, walk in Christ, these things that we ask, he's going to fix it for us. He's going to do it. Why would he fix it? Let me say it for you. Why? Why would he fix it so I could preach? Why? Because I'm serving him, right? I'm helping lead folks to him. It's not about me. It's about him. I've allowed myself to be used by Christ. If you allow yourself to be, be used by Christ, He's going to fix 
and he's faith for us. But here's what he knew. If he fixed it before I was doing these things for him, then what was going to happen? I was going to be a train wreck, right? And that's how he is. And it is what? Out of love. And it's for his good. Here's what, folks, so often thinks. Well, the law, I asked for this and he didn't fix this. And that tells me that Christ doesn't love you. He didn't fix it for you because he knows you. it wasn't the right time. That's why he, he didn't fix it because he loves you with all his heart and he knew what he could handle and couldn't. So as we grow and as we abide in Christ and as we go about our way, always look for what he had planned for us. Look for what he had us to design for a hammer is a hammer, right? A hammer is used to drive nails. That's what it was designed for, to drive nails. Each and every one of us was fixed for something for Christ. Now I hear some folks say, well, I can't do this. I can't do this. And they're right. They can't. I can't preach. But he can fix it. He can. If we'll abide in Christ. If we'll do what he has for us to do, if, if, we will, if we will serve him, he's going to fix these things. I'm happy to have everyone who's here. It's a small group, but that's okay. We're two or more of God in Christ. He's in the group, right? He's in the midst. So as we go about our way, I want us to always stop and think, how can I find ways to to grow in Christ and always stop and share. Always share our stories with somebody. Share your story. Why do I say share your story? It's what Christ has done for you. You have no idea how that may impact somebody else. Share your story. I hear folks say, you have a powerful story, Daryl, about how you stuttered the words, hung, and you couldn't preach in these fictions. Everybody has. Why is that everybody's story just as powerful? It's a story about Christ. Right? It's a story about what God can do. He can do all things. If everybody in life will share their story, if the world could, they could hear everybody's story, here's what would stick in the world's mind. He can do everything, and he can. He can fix, he can fix anything, and he will, if you will abide in Christ. If you will live, if you will live how he had it planned. Now here's what happens with folks so often and frequent. I've got my own plans. I want to do it my own way. I want to do what I want to do. And all that is is a train wreck that's about to happen. It's not what you want to do. It's what Christ has for us to do. If we will live and to how he had it. Has it plans? He said something here. And there's where you'll find your joy and your happiness. It's in Christ. It's not of you. It's not on you. It's in Christ. Now I'm going to close in prayer and have us all we have. Lord, as we go our way, Lord, I just pray this week that we would always stop and share and never leave from the truth. And Lord, I pray that each one of us here, Lord, to live, Lord, more as you had it planned. And your name I pray. Amen. Happy to have you guys. That's all we got, unless you guys go home early tonight. See, I didn't hold you long. <laughs>